Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at at least five keyboard shortcuts for Lightroom that will definitely speed up your workflow. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm here in library view and just for a quick review for my new Lightroom users, when you select a photo you can switch between your various views right from the keyboard. So for example, we're out in the grid view, which shows us all our thumbnails. If I hit the letter E, that will take me to the loop view. Hitting the letter G again will take me to the grid view. So E for loop, uh, loop with the E on the end, and G for grid. All right, but let's say we want to uh, kind of get more real estate for the uh, image that we're going to look at in loop view. So I'm going to go ahead and go to loop view. And I want to have, uh, you know, less stuff at the top of the screen. So here's your first keyboard shortcut. If you hit the letter F, as in full screen, that will take you up one level of full screen. You'll still see the menu bar. If you hit the letter F one more time, now you're in full screen mode, giving yourself some more screen real estate at the top and bottom of your screen. Now, of course, you can still get to the menus just by dragging your mouse up to where the menu bar will be, and it will pop back down. But hitting the letter F, once will take you into one full screen view and hitting it again will take you up to the full screen view and then hitting F one more time will take you all the way back down. So, and by the way, here's a bonus tip while we're there. Uh, a lot of times we, we kind of want to see the image and nothing else around it. So hitting the letter L for lights, dim, lights off. So L, lights on, L, lights dim, L, lights off. So just a quick way, and again, you can still use your arrow keys left and right to review the images while the lights are off. Everything still works, it's just that you don't see the rest of the interface. So again, going back to lights on. Now let's talk about what we're really here to do, and that is to um, rate and review and flag and pick our images. So I'm going to hit the letter T for the toolbar. And that will bring up the toolbar down here at the bottom so I can see all my pick flags, my star ratings, and my color labels. And of course, we could just go down there and click on each one of those as we need to, but we want to work fast and efficiently, and you can work more efficiently from the keyboard. So for example, hitting the letter P will make this a pick. Hitting the letter uh, X will make this a reject. But what if you hit the letter P by mistake? And you didn't want it to be a pick. You wanted to take it back down to being neutral or no flag. Well, here's your bon here's another keyboard shortcut, and that is Command on the Mac, Control on Windows, uh, down arrow key will we'll decrease the flag status. If I hit it one more time, it'll make it a reject. If I hit uh, Command up or Control up on Windows, that will increase the flag status. One more time, we'll make it a pick flag. So you can uh, get out of it by accident, just, or if you got into it by accident, you can get out of it on purpose by just hitting your command up and down arrow keys. Now, what about the stars? Well, the stars are pretty simple. They're the numbers on the keyboard. So one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. And if I don't want any stars, just hit the number zero, and that will take me back down. And of course, that leaves us with our color labels. So six for red, seven for yellow, eight for green, nine for um, blue, and I don't know, I don't believe there is one for the purple one. Unfortunately, there is, I don't think there's a keyboard shortcut for that. If there is, I will have to look it up and, and see what it is, because I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, that will, and hitting the number again will take the label off. Now, here's uh, your third or killer keyboard shortcut for doing this. Because let's say I make this a pick. Well, if I made it a pick, now I'm ready to move on to the next image. In other words, I, I, I don't, I don't want to have to look at this anymore. I want to go to the next one. So now, normally, I would hit the right arrow key to do that. But I'm going to decrease the flag status real quick. And I'm going to turn on the caps lock key. Because when your caps lock key is on, you get some extra magic here. And that is, if you press any of your, um, your flagging options, so like, for example, if I do a pick, then what it does is it automatically advances to the next photo. So you can quickly mark your picks and rejects, and it will take you to the next photo for you automatically. And I don't really like this photo. She's not really looking at the camera. There's something going on in the bottom right-hand corner, so I'll mark that a reject. And again, takes me to the next photo. Eyes are closed here. Reject. Takes me to the next photo. Maybe that's a pick, and we're done. It took me to another photo that was slightly uh, brighter or, or um, 
more exposed. Okay, so there we are. Those are some quick keyboard shortcuts for um, working with your picks and rejects. So that's with the caps lock on. Now I'm going to go over to the develop module and I'm going to just, to do that, I'm going to hit the letter D for develop. That will take me over to the develop module. Now we'll see all my develop options. And I want to crop this photo. And normally that would be the letter R on the keyboard for re <laughs> I know, for crop. Actually, no, it's, I, I look at it as R as re in reduce. So if I hit the letter R, that will take me into the crop rectangle. And of course, you can grab any of the corners you want and um, and do your crop thingy. You can <laughs> do it the way you want. Now, there is, uh, there is one, uh, one more thing that we want to be able to do here, and this is one of my favorite new keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom 3, and that is, you know, sometimes I want to crop a photo, and I want the crop rectangle to be the opposite orientation. So in this case, it's portrait, and I want it to now be landscape. So here's my favorite option now in the crop tool. Hit the letter X, and that will switch your rotation uh, from portrait to landscape just by hitting the letter X. I use that all the time. Okay, and then once you're done, you can hit the Enter key. That will, again, make your crop um, real. Uh, of course, this is all non-destructive, so if you hit the letter R again, you're right back to the crop rectangle. You have not lost anything in your photo. Uh, let's go back to loop view, and again, we can go to grid view from here if we want. And we can look at the rest of our photos, of course, but one of the things that uh, I kind of like to do sometimes, or when I'm reviewing photos, is also put in keywords. So, for example, let's say we go back to this photo. We'll look at it in loop view. We have some keyword suggestions here, and the keyword suggestions are pretty much just... They're suggesting from keywords you've previously ap applied to other photos. And then, of course, you have your keyword set here. There are uh, some sets that we include. You can make your own sets. But let's say we want to use one of these keywords that are here. Of course, we can just click on it, and that will apply it. But we're talking about keyboard shortcuts and, of course, making things fast. So if you hold down your Option key on the Mac or your Alt key on Windows, and now I want to do Option 9. And it's, it's nice that it's even showing you the overlay of what they are so you'll have an idea of which one. So I can go ahead and click to put in my own. And of course, it will allow me to use the ones that are here. Or I can hold down my Option key and get to those. So the Option key will work with your currently selected set. Of course, you can make your own set so it would have your keywords in it uh, so that you can choose it. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, let's see if I've got time for one more, and this is probably going to be an extra bonus tip here. So we've got uh, we've got the images here, and one of my other keyboard shortcuts that I love to do all the time is make a virtual copy. So let me explain what a virtual copy is for those of you who are new. Uh, I have this image here, and let's say we go in and look at it, and I kind of want to do something else with it, but I also want to keep the original. Maybe I want to crop it a little bit more to get rid of some of this fake grass that was in front of the background. All right, so we got it here, and I want to make an, I want to keep the one I have, but I also want another one to work on. So a virtual copy is just that. It's a virtual representation of the image. So now if I hit Command on the Mac or Control on Windows and the quote, or the little... Um, quote, <laughs> it will make a virtual copy of that photo. Now, the virtual copy is just like the original, but it will let me do things to this copy, but it's not taking up any extra drive space. So, for example, I can go ahead and go to my cropping for this, and I can go ahead and crop this image in, and now if I hit uh, R again to t get me out of it and go back to my grid view, I will have the one that is more cropped versus the one that isn't. You can do all kinds of things, of course, with your virtual copies, as I've shown before. Uh, for example, if you wanted kind of a antique grayscale on that one, you could do that as well. And it's not going to touch your original. So you can now have two copies of the photo that you could export because of your virtual copy. And again, the keyboard shortcut was command quote to get to that. So I hope those uh, keyboard shortcuts helped you. And by the way, I'll throw one more out there just because I, I'm thinking about it right now. And that is, we talked about full screen mode and getting rid of some of the interface. And of course, the letter T to get rid of the tools or bring the tools up. Another one that I love to do is when I'm not working with the side panels, just like in Photoshop, if you hit the tab key, it will hide all your panels. Lightroom works the same way. And 
lights on, lights off, lights dim, and tab key to bring them back. So, uh, uh, some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts that I use every single time I'm using Lightroom. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.